Hello and welcome to the Cowboy for Game Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast. I'm your host Jake. Tonight I'm joined by Ben from Nolan TCG. Hello. And Logan from Snake Rat on Twitch. Hello. How was our week in Yu-Gi-Oh! gentlemen? Uh, let's start with Logan. Yeah, Sunday was good. Um, like leading into it, we got Spite built. Um, we built the Punk version for a bit. And, you know, Sunday went great. We went X1, losing only to Skill Drain. And I'm not mm. saying the real deck, because it wasn't the real deck. It was just Skill Drain. What's that? <laughs> uh, so we went 3-1, that was fine. And then tonight, we lost two rounds to time. And that felt fantastic. Uh, and I'm not going to say any more about that. That is all. I will, though, in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> ben? Uh, I won the locals tonight. You did. Um, no gallery claps for you today. No gallery clap. Yeah. I uh, have been playing Splite. I guess have been this was the first tournament I've played Splite in because I didn't play Sunday um yeah deck worked really well I played like just the pure many hand traps possible variant uh talents cracked dark ruler good like every choice I had in my deck was just correct because I'm not playing like the techie like anti Splite hand traps because I'm like why would I play these when one other person at most two other people are playing Splite at locals there's no point for me to be like, here's my DD Crow, and here's yeah. my ga- my Ghost Ogre. Yeah, that was the reason I didn't make any changes to my deck, because there's very limited people that were playing it. Granted, I versed both of them. Yeah, uh, but, <laughs> yeah I both of us. <laughs> but at the same time, like the deck's still evolving. I'm still trying to fully understand exactly what it does as well, so there's not a lot of incentive for me to go changing the deck, especially when I'm about to change entire decks once the rest of my stuff arrives. Yeah, it's true. At the, uh, at the end of the day... Uh, Ultimate Slay won me the locals though. That card's so, insane. Game three, uh, game three final round. I open. Uh, well, my opening hand is Double Slay, Ash Blossom, uh, Starter. Uh, no, not Starter. Uh, Sprite Blue, Sprite Chet. Um, I Ash Blossom the Marincess card that searches the spell or trap. Because I was like, surely something. <laughs> sorry, something there is necessary. Um, he ends up with. Six negates. I think these are the five or six. Um, I completely break the entire board and just set up full combo because uh, ultimate slay is busted. Card not once per turn. So I went like ultimate slay, uh, send the link four, um, the evil twin, uh, send the marince- uh, spin back the marincess link four because um, it wasn't unaffected. Then I um, go activate the marincess, uh, activate the live twin link. He has Toad still, but he doesn't Toad negate. And I'm like, it's fine. I'm not spinning the Toad anyway. Uh, I spin the uh, Imperm in the back row. and Because he had two Imperm in his back row. And he had the Marincess trap in hand, which was now dead because I got rid of the Marincess monster. Mm. Um, and then I was like, well, here's a second Ultimate Slay. I'm going to send an Xyz in there. The totally Awesome is also gone. What? Cards Ultimate Slay is not once per turn. Not no. once per turn. That is outrageous. Yeah, cards not once per turn. That is fucked. So, uh... The more you know. <laughs> pretty much everything was gone. Oh, that's I just this. had to play through an Ashen Imperm. Uh, normal summoning the Diva <laughs> baited one. Special summoning the blue baited the second. I just went to town at that point. Um, and yeah, that was my locals. I had a fun time. Jake, how was yours? Uh, Sunday went okay. I went 2-2. Two, two, um... The main thing that screwed me, like I would have been X1 on Sunday, but um, I don't understand Mathmex and nor do I want to. Um, I just didn't read what it did. <laughs> now gallery! The gallery. Yay! Now gallery. the gallery. Yeah. Um, I assumed that it's like negate thing was a negate activation, so I played the line to protect the negation of activation, but it just negates the effect. And I could have stopped it from negating the effect by putting it face down with snow. Oh well, I know now. Now I don't have to read it. I'd rather learn from mistakes than learn by learning. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to read them. It's fucking Mathmex, bro. I'm not reading your fucking no, you just trash don't want garbage. You have to interact with Josh. Well, th- that's obvious. True. It goes without saying. True. Um, tonight, though, uh, went X1. Um, Versus all this, uh, tactics destroyed me. Um, <laughs> when I had full combo, tactics just ripped down all the card from your hand. I'm like, so Jake probably can't play through three negates. Well, not with three cards in yeah. hand, no. Yeah, let's just <laughs> rip one and see how this plays out. 
And like, I think both times it was branded opening that you ripped out of my it hand was, as yes, well. It was, yes. It was branded like, opening both times. I'll do it. Because I was like, that. I'll rip the branded opening and just end on Omnia Monster Negates. <laughs> yeah, it was not fun. Worked well. Um, game two was against... Oh, I've lost it now. It was a good game. It wasn't you. Who dubbed us before you? Harry. First Harry. Um, that was a fun game. Um, I think the biggest issue he had is, uh, obviously, I won the die roll, so I just set up my thing. Um, he didn't open any extenders, so like he just normal summoned his arm, and I um, either destroyed it or bounced it, and then that was the end of that. Um, game two, um, he played a line not really looking at what he was doing and went to set up to do like a punk fusion summon. But he didn't have another punk in hand so he just ended on lambda the quick fusion oh not the quick fusion guy but the fusion guy um and the gamma in hand okay um so all i did was normal summon a luba not use the effect punch over the lambda and then continue playing as if yeah, <laughs> nothing's that, happening that is something that we've discussed is the effect of gamma in the current format and how it's sometimes just fine to just normal summon and not use the effect yeah oh yeah like there's, that's what I'm learning against Spy as well is that like trying to push through the negates is yeah. a bit redundant and because it's just it's effectively elf that allows you to spear out multiple yeah. negates yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's fine to sacrifice the effect of your normal summon if you have one to just punch over that the problem does lie in the, do the dupe frog the dupe frog is the issue yeah so yeah. yeah the benefit of mine and I'll get on to our match in a minute like yeah, that's the way to play it, is get rid of the things that are causing you the most grief. Yeah. Play through less negates after the battle phase and set up a board post-battle phase. Yeah. Or just open two ultimate slay, which apparently is a once per turn, and then you don't care. <laughs> Bust. I, that's, that's actually ridiculous. I didn't realise it wasn't once per yeah, turn. That card should be $1,000. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Imagine if you play against someone playing fusions and links, and then you're just like, I'm yeah. going to rip you to shreds. That makes the two ultimate slays four interruptions. Yeah, it's kind of busted. Um, Technically five. On to the last game. Um, do, I, do I just leave for this part? <laughs> no, no, stay. Um, <laughs> we're going to zoom in on your face. Um, so I was versing Logan. Uh, I won the die roll. Um, I think our first game was fine. Like, I don't think you were able to play through everything, but it wasn't like a super unfair kind of thing. I just kind of just had the standard board um because we did play three games didn't we uh, so was, no. it, was it game one no it was it was game one which game was um so game one was um no no we ended up going to game three okay because it was game three in time. time um yeah so game one went for a little while um mainly because um i think you had enough extenders to be able to play through the board that i had so mm. it was a bit grindy i did get to a point though where i got to summon priskini on and then summon back his toad Okay. Yeah. He had so many resources. Like, I only opened up. I had all the resources. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna, I I was gonna not speak every whole time, but I was like, I just opened up like one Valor, and I was like, this does nothing. Yeah, because um, I think yeah, I uh, standby or even draw phase did the um, branded opening, so yeah, the Valor yeah. was dead, yeah. and I already had branded fusion in hand, so I played branded loss. So then the Valor was doing fucking nothing, um, and then yeah, set up the standard board with a negate mm -hmm. um and then in the second turn i like he said he still said you still set up a like good board despite i played for like three and a half negates and i set up like code elf with like two back row yeah like, like it was enough. it was a fine board um game two um yeah you just went off yeah. i didn't open any slides um the thing that would have got me back into the game was my tactics i was hoping to pull a bend and just draw into what i needed <laughs> he had the solemn so it didn't matter um that was annoying um and then game three um i set up again pretty standard board lost uh mirror jade i had and because i opened branded in red i did i when i summoned the aluba i searched for branded opening so that i'd still have access to adlib um and then set the opening the red and then passed but like um no i didn't end up banishing the aluba because i didn't need to um so then um Logan declares battle phase, at which point the timer goes off, uh, indicating <laughs> time in the round. So I was like, okay. And then people were explaining how it works, because I always forget. But it didn't matter. <laughs> it, no, because you'd already gone past the battle phase, and like the sprite opening sort of 
puts you in that position. Oh, um, my opening was trash. It was like E Tele into so I had like access to Zam to the Armin, which cost life points. points. Starter, life, life points. points. Evenly matched. Doesn't get me any, any damage in battle phase. Like hand trap, hand trap. And so I was like, well, cool. And against De- like against Brandon, it's like I know where we go here. I see the clock has forty eight seconds. Summon your boy. <laughs> Yeah, so he went to battle phase. Oh, I think, yeah, you started the battle phase. I summoned um, Thingo from deck. Um, go to uh, evenly matched. I bring back Tragedy, summon Bernie Lad, Did the manage the board. Switcheroo. Yeah, and then Mirror J comes back. So it's like, the board is the same, but different. The board <laughs> is the same, except now you don't get a main phase two. Yeah, <laughs> and I was just like... Yeah, it didn't and matter. I wasn't it. playing for that. I had no idea how much time was left when we went into the third game. No. Um, it was just then, like as that happened, that that was the best line of play. Um, so sorry about that. To yeah. be fair, I think that's actually the best line of play if you're getting even lead in that deck. Yeah, yeah. And now that like the game has swung to that point where people are playing like big board breakers to try and fuck off other boards, I think that that's probably a standard line. Yeah, yeah, definitely, one hundred percent. I think like yeah. The problem was I knew I knew the time and I saw my hand and I was like there's nothing that happens here. This this just happens. I agree with your comment though, like your build was built for locals. Yeah. I was just playing a list that I was like, if I versus Ben, I feel very confident I can beat Ben's list because it's built to beat the mirror and tier element and stuff like that. And skill drain decks. Literally no one has tier <laughs> element at our locals yet. No one has but tier me, element yet. And I'm playing Splat. Yeah, so there's like Three or four people who want to build it, who are just like all missing like one or two cards, and so none of them are playing it. And I was like, "Well, well, we're still in that very early thing. Like the set's only been out for four days, so like yeah. the the fact that you have it all is purely because you bought a case. Um, the reason you have it all is because we bought a case. Yeah, <laughs> you can get your singles by now. Hey, I, I mean, bought you three boxes. You may have bought your singles by now, but that doesn't mean like guarantee that you have them. No, the uh, brag yeah. goes Martha's pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah, it's Martha, though. No, Why it's did I say that name? I don't know, man. I bought three cases and got three instant contacts, so I understand what people <laughs> get their boxes. <laughs> Every box he's opened, he's pulled instant contact. It's hilarious. Not another one. Build heroes, bro. Yeah, it's a sign. It's a sign from the universe. It summons a level seven. I'll be the second hero player at Locals. Oh, yeah, there is another one. Um, but yeah, um, so this will probably be one of the last outings with Branded if my Rhino Heights arrive sometime through the week, because then I'll move on to Tier Element and start doing demilting. This Respectable. Yes. I, uh, I need to get fresh sleeves for my Terrellement deck. I have fresh sleeves. See, I I'm... had my deck fresh sleeved and then he borrowed it and now it's fucked. <laughs> he was like, let me test Terrellements and now I just am missing like 15 sleeves. <laughs> and I'm like, cool, bro. It's actually 15 cards. I took all those runner hearts. 15 runner hearts seems excessive. It does seem excessive. Secondary mm. market's making money, bro. Don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Uh, moving on to some news. Uh, first, we start with Master Duel, uh, which did a very big update as of today. Uh, so we have three new packs uh, that have come out today. Invincible Raid, which is uh, B-Troopers, DDD, Gross. Um, and the Dynamorphia. Um, all kind of cool roguish decks. Um, that one does have uh, Chimera... What's, it? What's it actually called? Guardian Chimera. That's yeah. what it's called. That one has Guardian Chimera in it, despite none of these decks yeah. actually playing it. Um, Wait, does, does that box have Advent in it? Not that I can see. Okay, no Advent in that box. We move. Okay. Uh, then we move on to Cosmic Ocean, uh, which has all of the new Marincess support, uh, the extended support for Ice Jade, yep. and has the new Umi cards. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so, yeah, doing water tings. Is Advent in this box? No. I see. We yes. move. We uh, move. And then uh, the third pack is the Newborn Dragon. A um, bunch of zombie stuff in here, weirdly. Um, all of the stuff from the branded structure deck, so Lubellion, Mirror Jade, uh, mm. the hand trap things, all that. Um, the ghost trick support cards, which I appreciate, I guess. Um, and some more of the blue eye stuff, like blue eyes jet dragon and all that nonsense as yep, well. Yep. Um, oh, and the Borolo Link Fight as well. Okay, that's decent. Yeah, that's pretty good. Thanks, Dragon. But is that no. meant in this box? No. no. No, it I not. see. Yes, I see. Uh, we also have uh, officially, as of today, the Duelist Cup has started, um, which I've oh, got yes. a bit of a breakdown further on about how that works. Um, in terms of uh, player 
uh, things, I guess. Uh, I don't know how to, to, to describe this in terms of a category. But we get an extra deck slot. So you can build one you more build deck. You build 21 decks. Yes. All of my deck slots are just filled by the random the starter decks that, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that I just can't afford to delete. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't delete them. That's the thing. I don't think you can just delete what's there. You have to just like build something yeah. else in it. You, you just get rid of yeah, everything there's else. There's definitely a delete deck is there? button. No, I haven't seen Cause it. Because I've deleted like three of them and I just was like this is the, this takes like two minutes to delete each one I just can't be bothered I'll be here for half an hour it'll be quicker just to go and edit well yeah down. that's what I've been doing is I've, as I've been building decks I'll just go into the trash ones get rid of all the trash okay. put all the stuff I need in it and then rename it I'm sure if I did this for my PC it'd be easy but I'm, I'm on mobile yeah you play on mobile yeah, you play like on the mad phone. man yeah no not about that it's because I can just chill it's fine uh, we also have a whole bunch of new card animations uh, the monster ones are neither here nor there um, did advent get an animation uh, Advent has not been given any code. I see. <laughs> this, um, is most, this is most disappointing. <laughs> um, so yeah, the monsters are neither here nor there. They just kind of do the thing. Uh, but we do have animation for forbidden droplets. Um, the screen goes dark. A big purple drop falls in the middle of the screen and then you negate some things. Uh, Called cool. by the grave. Um, a sassy dead guy points his hand over near the graveyard like so. Uh, it shoots a laser beam, doesn't it? No, just points. No, I, I swear, like a, a the the art on the card of like the, the no, that's just the surprise of the old man. No, but I think that still happens. I Good think look. it like shoots at the grave. See how it's got like he's got life behind his head because a uh, hand's pointing at him. Yeah. Um, it's I I did not see that. Uh, yeah, it looks fucking Ooh. hilarious. Honestly, a hand <laughs> just goes up and goes. <laughs> it's so with, funny. With that exact facial expression with it. Well, you can't see its face. Anyway. Um, we have the D. Um, well, the Jap. Sorry, the, the, the Japanese. D of death. Yeah, the <laughs> Japanese have the D. Uh, we have the F. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. What? Um, <laughs> uh, gold sarcophagus. Um, just comes up with the gold sarc thing. Cool. Is that um, not already in the game? The card gold exists. Sock? It's an no, animation. Like the animation. No, I swear uh, that would have been. No, you're wrong. Yeah. Um, Swords of Revealing Light. Um, does like the full anime thing of like the sword shoot down in the middle of the field um magical cylinder probably the one that will be seen the most out of all of these animations oh yes uh mirror force um sets up a barrier and then looks like someone shoots it and just goes pew <laughs> <laughs> um rageki super similar to lightning storm um something comes down does a line like through the monster side of the mm. board um i haven't seen the one for jackpot seven though that sounds it'll probably really be like the funny. first seven will spin and then the second seven will spin, yeah. and then the third will spin. That would be cool. If they programmed it that well, Actually, I'd be really happy. Based on the fact that the next one you're about to see is Final Countdown, I'm assuming it's a win con. Oh, animation. true. Yeah, it'd just be a win con animation. Yeah. And yeah, now that I think about it, that's the same with um, the, death. the yeah. death thing. It, and I've seen the death one. The death so, one's yeah. actually really cool. It's got um, Dark Necrophy over the Ouija board yep. doing this, and then she like pushes it towards you. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's it's nice. <laughs> Um, we've also got some new fields. Um, oh, I don't know what put into the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, know whether those. they're. I don't know whether they're all available to purchase just yet, but okay. they've been coded in at okay. the very least, okay. so they I, may be available. I was at a later they were available. Day. You, they may be. I don't know. I haven't been on. I'm literally reading the Bragg, page. Did you go on tonight? Sorry, I just no, I just queued up on Jules Cup. Oh, um, <laughs> he needed to get the points. <laughs> um, we know where his priorities lie. Um, I'm assuming that's a B Troopers related field there. Uh, we also have Medolce, which is a bunch of cakes and tings. Um, that's not what I want. And tings. I think it's called cakes and tings and cakes. Um, and then we've got uh, like a sort of underwater field for the Yumi stuff. Looks yeah. pleasing cool. enough, I guess. The Medolce one's probably the nicest one of these three. Um, we've got some new fields as well. Um, I like the standy. Yeah, uh, uh, we got two rank ups. Yeah, yeah, two rank ups. The um, trap card that was supposed to go with Ring of Destruction that no one ever played. No, uh, Ring of Infinite Destruction? Ring of Demolition? It's something like that. Yeah, something like that. Ring of it's that. That one. <laughs> um, and then whatever the fuck that is. Uh, just looks like a steampunk thing. Uh, and then, yeah. then we have new mates. Oh, I thought you were going to say band cards. No, <laughs> no, no band list. Just add more. Just Thank add you. all the things. Power creep. If we add a bunch in. Don't need a band list. Uh, so new mates include uh, blue eyes, white dragon, um, Quibolt hedgehog. I think is what it's called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hedgehog. Uh, Cyframe gear gamma. Um, I don't know what this thing's called. Oh, never mind. Uh, Kageta kagi. Um, I didn't realize it. Kageta kagi. Mm -hmm. It's the level four. I know. 
Oh. He knows. Yeah, I was gonna say it seems like I was gonna say it seems like a card you would play. <laughs> it, it, it's been around since like twenty ten. Like. Oh yeah, it's super old. Uh, Revenge Red Slayer and uh, the one that we announced a while ago on the podcast, Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. Uh, from what I understand, I think that one might be a premium mate, but I'm not hundred oh, percent sure. For the size that it is, yeah. I'll say this: if you have Gamma as your mate, you're a masochist. No, see, I thought the same thing. I thought everyone would just have um, Cleefort Monolith as their mate if they were playing Cancer decks. They don't. They go for the really trash ones, like the skateboard. Yeah, and... it's his true. Song. Yeah, true. <laughs> I'm playing. Yeah, they play the Soccer shittest Wars. possible yeah. mates. Because like for it's them, free. it's like an opposite flex. Much like in the card, much like in the real card game, they don't want to spend any money. <laughs> um, and a bunch of new icons as well. Uh, notably, we've got uh, B Trooper, Bujin, uh, Aluba, like the alternate art of Aluba as well. Oh. Um, I was gonna make Enchantress, comment, uh, Pirate Ting, mm. and some other ones. All kind of okay. Um, the fucking link for Mermel. No, no, no. Useful card. Oof. Yeah. Uh, a bunch <laughs> of new card collectors. One with uh, Abyss Teus on it. One with <coughs> Abyss Collector. Here? That's not. You should know that that's not Teus, Jake. Hmm? That's a Migaloo. Oh, I can't remember which one's Teus. He Whoa! can't read. Hey, he can't read. Leave him alone. When I met Jake, he was playing Mermel. Yeah, but he can't, it's not his fault he can't read. Doesn't, just, this man does not have, like, the link in the heart of the cards. Oh. The gallery is loud. I wonder if it's getting picked up. Some stuff doesn't get picked up from the gallery. No, Seb doesn't get picked up because it like sounds like the same thing. A little bit got picked up last night. It's good to not be in the gallery it's anymore. Up, he got promoted. Um, yeah. We then also have uh, some upcoming gates. Uh, so the one that we've got first is B Trooper. So we get to find out what their go is. Um, we get some rewards with them as well. They're trying to defend their honey. You said honey so sus. <laughs> I'm trying to defend their honey. Yeah, <laughs> honey. <laughs> I hate it. Um, with that, you get uh, B Trooper sleeves um, and some other cool little things. Um, other ones that we've got coming, though, Ally of Justice, uh, Bujin, Thunder <coughs> Patrol, Mermel, and Vedred. Hmm. There's some cool gates coming up. That, thankfully, in this list so far, they haven't announced one of those like um, anime structure ones where like you have to play the anime deck the whole way through because those are fucking aids. So, uh, I mean, I hate really feel something we've learnt this week on the uh, topic of gates. Jake's the only one we know that plays them all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all of us are just like, yeah, here's the gates I've played. Look, it's the five at the start, and then I gave up. Yeah, <laughs> look, there's two reasons I play the gates. One, I like the law. I like just playing through the thing, learning a bit about the deck, learning a bit about the story behind it. Cool. Um, the other thing I like about it is it's free gems. Except when it's not. Yeah, the one time it wasn't. That triggered me. <laughs> that, that Those decks were painful. I should have got free gems for that. Didn't care about the law at all when you realised there was no free gems. No, that one didn't have law. That was the worst part. It was just playing Jaden's shitty fucking Neos deck. And then you verse fucking Yugi Moto at the end and he always opens Magician's Circle. Every game. He believes in the heart of the cards. Why don't you? Because those cards were shit. When I was playing with my cards, I fucking demolished that idiot. Anyway. Just called the King of Games an idiot. Yeah, I did. And now he's dead. Anime fans are going to hate you. He's dead. Fuck him. I could make that seem really bad in post. Yep. (laughs) I dare say you would. Mm. (laughs) Anyway, <laughs> moving on from Master Duel, uh, we have some. Oh, hang on, where is it? Uh, you can't read. News on the upcoming you Lost can't Arts. Read. You can't read. True. Uh, so we've got the new Lost Arts that are coming through. Uh, we've got Cyber Agent Ben 10, Tribute Burial, Axe of Despair, Fake Hero, Cyber Angel Idartan, and whatever this Zexel card is. Zexel yeah. Friends. I don't know what that card is. Um, I can read you the text. Maybe that'll give you some insight as to what it does. I know it's just flavor text. <laughs> you ruined the joke. I know it's just flavor text. <laughs> I think it's you. a print of a card that the OCG just kind of had that was like an old promo of theirs. It seems like the Ujo friendship of Zexel. I think I think that's what it is. Apparently, it's playable though. No fucking way that's playable. I, I think you can have it. Like I don't know how you would actually play it, but it is puttable. Like you can put it into your deck. Does it have requirements? So, is it an Xyz monster? Um. 
based purely on looking at it, yes, but I can't see uh, a level, I can't see attack or defense, the fact that uh, it says I can't see monster. a monster type. Um, yeah, it's literally just the picture of Zexal. Surely it's not playable, unless they're like, oh, you can put in your extra trick as an extra app target. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. Yeah, if they don't put this as a limit, could you just play 15 of this? <laughs> well, it has a name. It has a name, Jake. <laughs> Um, Three so yeah, what was that noise? What? <laughs> 33% of these cards are just bigger <laughs> boobs. <laughs> Seb's been waiting for that for so long. The one yeah. time the gallery got up tonight was for that comment. The the rest of them, violence. So what we're yeah, taking is just for... One of them is underwear. Yeah, one, so yeah, one of them is underwear. Is that Ayrton? One of them is no, anime bait. Hero. Two are boobs, two are violence. Which one's it? Bang, bang. Um, the Axe of Despair. Zexal has Friends. has eyeball on it. And the burial. <laughs> oh yeah, tribute burial as well. <laughs> it's, I wouldn't say it's violence, it's more so, gore. I'd like to point out that in Australia we've just missed two Lost Arts. Yeah. They just skipped two. They just also, it could just not... be us. Like, no, no, no. Uh, the stores in Australia no, no, no. are getting Those stuff. do not exist in yeah. Australia. They do not I have gone looking for them. Right. It's It's annoying. the Luminite and the Trilight one, right? The two luminous? Yes, 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 yeah. yes. No. It's Twilight Swarm, because we got regular Luminar. Did we? I think so. Unless it was Lila yeah. that we got. Yeah, no, we got the normal one, but we haven't got the Twilight yeah, so one. It's the Twilight so Swarm, the and then one? I can't remember what the other card is, but yeah, neither mm. of them in Australia. You can get them from overseas, but I want them sealed and in English print. Well, I guess I've got like a couple that are US. I can probably just buy them from TCG Player. I'm on a tangent here. Jake's about to tell us about some weird looking Melfi cards um I'm gonna try um so in the upcoming pack whose name I can't remember but it has the race cards in it um race wars were, it's yeah. D-Bad um is it actually D-Bad I don't yeah. know it's D-Bad 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 D-B-A-D oh yeah there we go it's I can't D-bad. remember what it's called though D-Bad <laughs> That's the abbreviation. <laughs> that has got rid of the dash. The bad. The bad. Um, but yeah, the second archetype that's been revealed is the purely archetype, which is, if you recall, the uh, exes that grow when you show them love. Um, I don't know how you make them. Um, how do you show them love? So far, from what I've seen, they've got a whole bunch of exe monsters, a whole bunch of spells, a couple of traps, but one main deck monster. So the fact that I've only seen one main deck monster uh, makes me think that this could be Zodiac, but I highly doubt they do that again. Uh, thing is, I've read them. Yep. They are not. Oh. What are they? Then? I, I haven't got to the spells yet, so I don't know if the spells cheat them out. Um, but basically, their monster is a level one. Uh, their Xyz are rank twos or higher. They have do they have summoning conditions? Or uh, none of the rank twos that I've read have a thing that say you can Xyz this card using a uh, level one purely as material. So it's. Worst Sky Striker. Yeah, I was gonna say, it sounds like a bad Sky Striker. Sky Striker is just worst zoo. Is it? Mm. Yes. So I'm just reading through this to see if they actually do a thing. Um, That's fine. We're stalling about civil debate between whether or not Sky Striker. I think they're different. I think Sky Striker. I think Fusion Sub Zoo is better than Sky. Ah, here we go. Sorry, I skipped over the rest of the effect of the level one. Sorry, the level one cheats out the others. So it is Sky Sky Striker, but not for free. (laughs) So once per turn, reveal a quick play spell in your hand. If you do, special summon Xyz monster that reveals, uh, that mentions it from your extra deck. But doesn't it also mill three and add a spell card? Uh, That's on its normal special summon. So normal special summon, excavate top three, add a excavated purely spell or trap. Oh, it's pure. When you told me about this, you didn't say purely. And I was like, holy fuck, that's That's good. That's good. In archetype spell and trap. And then place the bottom at the bottom of the deck in any order. So basically just the Digimon uh, thing. Um, He said that to me as well. And I was like, people aren't going to know what the fuck you're talking about, Jake. Amelia looked at Ben. What Digimon? I Amelia looked at Ben for context. So the Uh, the spells are quick place? Uh, Yes. I think the. Three, four, five. There's five quick play spells. Um, okay. But from what uh, from what I've read, you can only cheat out the Z whose card relates to the one that you reveal oh, in its okay. effect. The effect is also not a quick play. On the Xyz monsters? Or the summon effect? No, no, no. The, the Xyz do their thing. I'm not reading through this. But the okay. monster that cheats them out is not a quick effect. 
That's understandable, at least. That seems fine. Uh, and from what I can see on those uh, quick play spells, most of them need a uh, exe to do things. So you negate the effect of the monster to something. Yeah, now. basically, they've made an entire artifact of rescue rabbit. Okay, it's a, it's just a huge glass cannon. Yes. Is their trap card called glass cannon? <laughs> Uh, their trap card is called... Oh, the other one that kind of looked like a glass cannon. Uh, purely Leap. Um, this one, they've just put a thing there. Oh, there's just uh, a XE reprint? card reprint. Yeah. Mm. Oh, so this is a deck building set? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, It's the same one okay. where the race cards come out. Okay. And then we get the, um, the original cards that dance. Okay. Hmm. Logan doesn't have a fucking clue what we're talking about. Debad's looking pretty useless. Debad's looking... Purely awful. sounds awful. <laughs> um, yeah, it doesn't seem amazing, but... I've been wrong before. Um, we've True. got a. Like when you said battle phase was irrelevant. I mean, for Logan it was. Going back to the gallery. <laughs> uh, we've got a. Uh, what are they called again? Shonen Jump card that's been revealed. Uh, it is called uh, Demon Dragon Commander. Uh, Diabolical oh, I, Dragon I, I, I know this Commander, card. I should say. I read it. Uh, so dark level a fiend uh, basically um, if a fiend is sent to the graveyard other than itself it can summon itself from the graveyard um, mm -hmm. and it's one of those cards that's like it doesn't need to be there at the time that it happened like darkest diabolus yeah 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 and um, oh, what's the other one called the altar guys bitch um, oh yeah, yeah those ones um, so like that and then uh, if this card is sent to the graveyard by a card effect target a fiend monster in the grave and add it to your hand other than itself. Uh, the biggest issue with this is that you can only use either of those effects once per turn. Okay, that's, yeah. If it was both those effects, it'd be a mighty fine card. Unfortunately, it is not that. Do you I know suppose, what? Because there's probably a way to literally toolbox yeah. any fiend using that card. That structure deck already seems really good. Yeah. Like, really good. Do you know why this came up and I read it? Because it was in the, like, immediately came up in the Burning Abyss, like, Facebook group and they were like, oh my god this card's amazing Fiend! and the first yeah the literal first thing that I went to write that someone had already written was like any time a fiend card gets like posted everyone in the burning abyss chat goes this is our way back boys this is how we get back to relevancy but the card doesn't have burning abyss in its name and it's every time it's awful like no one plays it the only fiend card like relevant that has fiend in it is fiend griefing and even then like trap BA Depending who you ask, lamest BA. Trap BA went out of date years ago. Actually, those are just the top three regionals with Trap BA. Yeah. It's like meaning a bunch of ways to outsprite. Wasn't there... I swear I tried to hype Trap BA a little bit a while back with like Fire Lake. What came back for me to be like, Fire Lake? Uh, it was when Graph and everything came Graph back and three. and Surfer free. Yeah, I was like, we need to play Fire Lake. Let's yeah, go, I think Fire Lake. did do that a little while. It's a good time. You? I did. I hyped it for a few weeks. That was a simpler time back in the day. Good old Fire Lake. This wasn't that long ago. This was like two years ago. Yeah, this is another tangent we're going on to Source Yeah, pretty much. What have you got for us, Jake? Uh, next we have a uh, an interesting little uh, article that Bragg has sent through. It's a Reddit post about the average word count on oh. Yu-Gi-Oh cards by year. Um, so, we're going to start back in 2002. Let's go for 18 years. Uh, the average word count on a YGO card in 2002 was 84. So, so does this count effect monsters? Oh, sorry, does this count normal monster flavor text? Or does this affect monsters? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like a lot of flavor text. Did you is... say eighty-two? Is it thirty-two? Uh, he's blind. It is the lower end he of the can't graph. Read. Uh, Am I reading the wrong thing here? That says nineteen. Yeah, you're reading. What, what's, uh, what are these bottom numbers then? <laughs> so the graph. Nineteen. Is it maybe saying how many? Cards eighty-two. Are in the no, that can't be it either because some numbers seem really low. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, this graph. graph's actually a touch confusing. 19. Um, 82. Because it's got a number underneath and then it's oh, got a no. number up okay, top. Okay, so it's... uh, So the bottom is the max. So in 2002, oh, 84 right. was the most words on a card. I see. And cards okay. averaged 19. Okay, yeah. So average 19 and max 84. Um, that was Mungaroo Ram. It was. Mainly because it's tune cards and they've had yeah. heaps of garbage that's related to the tunes. The tune cards would have been the thing that I might need to take all the tune cards out. How much more that drops? Um, problem solving context. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
True. Target. Select one. <laughs> so if you had to guess at which year had the most I just card text, I just already you did. Graph, and so yet the second I you... guess I'll answer. Well, yep. yeah, he knows the answer now. It's got to be a year when Pendulum, like, died getting some relevancy. But she so, had the most. Yeah, well, I assume it's either, like, the year that um, perform how performages became relevant, or the year, like... I don't want to say Clifford. I don't think Clifford's... Oh, maybe Clifford, year. I'm going to say the, Pep, the year Pepe came out would be correct. Wrong. It was last year. <laughs> yes. Uh, that also the makes average sense. word count as of last year... Oh, no. Yes, as of last year, was uh, 75.3. Holy uh, shit. The maximum being 148 on a Starving Venom Fusion Pendulum card that I don't think I've read. I was going to say, it has to be like, uh, the Pendulum cards really did... The well, Pendulum yeah. would have to be the spike. Well, oh yeah, the, the most word count cards are Pendulum. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so in 2016, the biggest word count card was uh, High... Nirvana High Pattern Paladin yeah. with 151 the uh, which was then beaten the following year by Astrograph um yeah and then the year after by some fucking Abyss thingo and then the year after that by um Endymion and oh, then the yeah. year after that <laughs> by another Pendulum actually yeah uh, okay it does on. go back down because a uh, because it's the um, highest release Oh, the highest year. of that year. But, uh, yeah, pretty much <laughs> since 2015, the highest word count for that time period has been belonged to a Every pendulum, pendulum card. It does yeah. then, yeah. It goes back down a little, but, hey, still pendulum cards. Pendulum. Truth would be so happy. <laughs> They've got a vanilla in here with the weakest word count okay. in fucking 2003. <laughs> the vanilla with 117 oh, words on it. Oh, sorry, no, that's not the vanilla one. The, yeah, the yeah, Union. Yeah, the oh, Union one. Okay. So that makes a okay, lot okay. more sense. But yeah, it is a very wordy game, um, and it's unfortunately on the uh, smallest of the card games, yeah. which makes it difficult. Although I did find out the other day why they're so small. I can't remember if you yeah. remember if I told you this. Uh, I can't remember. So, it's cold. Hmm? It's cold. That's why. It's cold, that's why it's so small. <laughs> this, no. <laughs> the text box used to be like this, and then it got cold, the text box went like this. No. <laughs> I didn't hear Bragg so, for a good second. I was like, what the heck are we going to do? So here? when the uh, manga first came out, it belonged to Bandai Namco, or at least the rights to it belonged to that. Yes. And as a promotional item, they printed the Bandai cards, um, which you can see here. Um, to cards. get these cards, they were distributed in like vending machines and stuff. Mm. But the vending machines couldn't fit a standard size card. So they had to make them this size. And right. that's why some of them are like in like sections of four, because like you'd get the set. But Makes then when sense. Konami took over, they had these card sets like sort of in that size and whatever. And rather than fixing it to be the standard of every other card game, they're like, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Is this Pegasus's wife? What? Yeah. No. No? No, it no. is. It, it isn't. No. It's, no. It simply isn't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Jake seems to be more confident than I am, so I'm backing him. Anyway, um... But yeah, um, little... some interesting little tidbits for you there. Um, moving on to our Discord. I think there's oh. one more thing we haven't discussed. Regional results. For the past weekend. Good. Just it was just a quick passing thing, because we haven't prepared anything about it. Uh, mm -hmm. Splite did well. Some true elements popped up. Mathmaker also did decently well. Jake's just Dude. being made aware that there was regionals this weekend. I had no idea. No, I totally yeah. left it out of the rundown, so I was like, Ben's going to trash these regionals. Ah, no, no, no. Like, Pure... <laughs> like, they're high player count regionals. Yeah. Pure like, Sprite and Adventure Sprite. There's really. a few in America. Edison oh, America. That's one. why I have no idea about them. Yeah. What? Uh, Edison had one. Yeah. Pure Sprite and Adventure Sprite were, like, really well represented. And Tier Element oh, did better than Oh, that's the count that I saw that was, yeah. like, Sprite, 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 Adventure Sprite. Sprite, Sprite, Sprite. Yeah, yeah, Adventure Sprite popped up a lot, and he was like, oh, we should consider Adventure Sprite. And I was like, no. You will do anything to get <laughs> that deck into rotation, won't you? Was it not like two podcasts ago where you're like, oh, I was going over the format with Ben, and I was like, can Adventure survive in this format? Can it do a thing? It can, apparently. I, when, we, when we sat down and talked about it, I said, do we consider this? And you were like, probably not. And I was like, I just don't see how this is good. Because, like, you you draw adventure cards plus any of your sprites. You have to sack your fucking adventure your cards anyway. It's just worse. I think it falls under the same theory crafting as, like, when people were going to do adventure branded. It's like, 
you have branded opening to search your thing, sure. But at the same time, that deck didn't really need that extra yeah, thing. It's exactly. It's exactly that mentality. You're sacrificing hand traps for a negation engine that isn't necessary. And also, I mean, just the like, hand trap is also just a negation. Yeah. But hey, if you play it and you open really well, it, it's really good for you. Mm. If you play it and you don't open well, you're fucked. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, Splite did well, unsurprisingly, over the weekend. I'm sure we'll see a bunch of like stuff pop up. Um, from the Splite list that I looked at, though, the ones that did well were the Sprite list playing hard counters to Sprite. So yeah. I'm assuming there was a lot of Sprite floating around and those decks just rose to the top because they played the most matchups and they prepared for the mirror. Yeah. Which is going to be very much for Oceans and stuff like that in Australia anyway. Yeah, I'm, I am think I'm going to have to do like the main deck DD Crow, Ghost Ogre, for Oceans. DD Crow at least. Yeah. It's so weird, like, I think at the moment in Australia for a lot of us, because we play at local level, where you have to build your deck very much for local competition. Yeah. And then to try and test for Oceans at the moment is like, I need to rebuild this entire deck for the next two days, test, and then rebuild back. Yeah. And it's just like... Uh, you work full time, so you, you'll experience this more than I do. Like, it's difficult. It's difficult. <laughs> Even working like f- four days a week and college two days a week, like, it's hard to find the time to like go through that rebuild, go through that rebuild. Now imagine being me and doing that, and also having to theorize and deck build other decks for content. <laughs> just, just do what I do, and just forget to upload for like a whole year. Nah, it's fine. We're still chugging along. But that does bring us to our wonderful comment section. Uh, it make does. Sure to comment down below. Yeah, so we'll start with our podcast. Um, link in the so... Discord. Discord. Link. Description. I was getting to Discord. that bit. We're not in the Discord oh, yet. Discord. We're Shut not there yet. You normally plug it at the start. I do, but we usually don't have comments on our YouTube. Do you comment on comment YouTube? below this video right now. If yes. You're here. Um, Even if just comment, I'm here. We'll read it out next week. Yeah. <laughs> we'll read God. everyone who was here. If you comment below this video, comment, I'm here. If you're listening on uh, Spotify, Google, go back to YouTube. Google whatever. Um, yeah, go to the YouTube video for this. Comment down below saying you were here, and we'll read your name out next week. I was here, but came from Spotify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Comment where you came from. At some point, we probably should just do a poll as to like where people listen to. But anyway, well, Bragg that's literally gave us the stats. <laughs> it's. <laughs> No, but more in depth. But anyway, a bit, a bit, that man Bragg doing all the work. That anyway, more in depth, Bragg. More in depth. Do better. <laughs> I'll leave shitty regional results in next time. <laughs> uh, so our first question, oh rather comment, comes from uh, Celestial Heretic, um, asking why I look like I'm being held hostage on my own podcast. <laughs> well, you see, it's because Jake doesn't like making eye contact with the camera. I don't. True. It's really annoying to edit. <laughs> well, the thing is, I'm trying to make contact, con- eye contact with the people that I'm talking to. No, so. no, no, but it's like, welcome to the Cowboy for Game Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast. My name is Jake. I'm here today with... <laughs> it's really <laughs> triggering. And the one look up, zoom the pan across. Jake, <laughs> and he's just looking at the microphone. <laughs> I'm like, what are you what doing? What's worth, this comment was on the Logan and Blake episode. Oh. <laughs> Why did you feel held hostage, Matt? <laughs> You were like the peanut butter and jelly between our sandwich. It was a surprisingly sandwich. low energy podcast. Yeah. I was su- yeah, Blake, like, I was surprised that. that because Blake was here, it was still like kind of just lull um, and a bit chill. Usually when he's here, he's like fucking yelling about some bullshit. Because I'm not here to to bounce off. Yeah, there's been no bird corner tonight. Yeah, yeah. instead we did Splite Avenue. Yeah, we've changed. We've adapted. <laughs> uh, next you know we why have I call it Splite Avenue, right? Because they're all Thunder Monsters. We've got to walk down to Electric Avenue. Why did I just call it Electric <laughs> Avenue? Also, isn't one of them a pyro? Yep. Yeah, they're fires. <laughs> anyway, uh, the next comment comes from 6 i 6 who comments, uh, nice to hear my formatting was appreciated. I believe that was in reference to his um, average band list date thingy. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Good one. Yes. And now we move on to our Discord. If you weren't aware, we do have a Discord. Link will be in the description below. Feel free to jump in, say hi, and ask us questions. Or attack Ben for his Yeah, say disability. hi and then fuck off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's attack Ben. I, I, that dude seemed perfectly reasonable. All you guys are like, this guy's a fucking ass. And I'm like, this guy seems nice. I never called him an ass. Nice. I, never him an yeah. ass. <laughs> I, just think, I just think it was funny to leave straight away. Stick around. Talk to Ben. He's nice enough. I guess... 
So I don't respond. <laughs> I don't respond enough to people's messages. I'm far too busy. I never use Discord. It's always Jake and Lachlan that are responding. To Discord's people. my work thing, so I like just rarely openly go through it. Right. I'll just like read the immediate notification and be like, I'll get back to this. Mm. I'm always checking Discord. Any excuse to not be working. Okay. Um, <laughs> our first question comes from El Nino Jimenez. Uh, which deck do y'all think is easier to learn for a returning player? Splite or Tier Element? Splite. Don't start. <laughs> I decided... It was so easy. I decided to try and get back into competing... Uh, competitive play, rather, since a lot of old-school players I played with back in the good old Edison days are returning to my locals. I don't have a budget either, so I'm down to play whatever uh, the cost to Must build nice. either of the decks. P.S. <laughs> Goal is an awesome... Oh, Goat is an awesome format. I don't know what Blake is talking about. It's just it's fine for a couple of games and then you move on. Um, but yeah, they are right. Splite is the much easier one to learn if you're returning. Um, it's just pieces on a board. Yeah, mm. uh, Terra Elements is a lotto deck at the moment, and yeah, yeah, it's, its mechanic it is... is to mill, and because at the moment you're not getting a heap of mills like you will be once the Shizu stuff comes out, it is a bit of a luck sack of what you hit off the top. Yeah. If you don't hit the right stuff at the right time you're going to be struggling a little bit. It is the That's much true. more difficult deck to play. Like, Splite... I, I was talking to Jake about it after our match tonight. I was like, Splite is relatively monkey brain with only sections of, like, time to big brain this. Mm. Even your side deck is, like... My side deck is monkey brain. Those are a lot of flex spots in Splite. Like, yeah, you can build it to play against what you want to play against. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When you're, like, effectively 24 cards are required, mm. the rest is whatever you would like. And your extra, your side deck and extra have Even so much flex. That twenty four is high. It's probably like twenty cards. You can play. You have to play these twenty cards. Then the other four are. What is your preferred extra engine? I think it's twenty one cards. Twenty one. Yeah, because you have your nine monsters. Are you counting the divas? I am counting diva. Don't count the diva. Alright, so that's eighteen. Eighteen. Yeah. No, nineteen. I didn't count dupe. Didn't count dupe. Wait, some of us aren't playing dupe in the regionals. It's. I just don't get the reason to not play dupe. It's. Feeds your leaves IP. You without, leaves you without a super molly target. Yeah, but we're siding in anti spell gone first. So, I got, yeah. Side the anti spell. This is true. That way your opponent can't super pole you for a thousand dragon and put the bandai card out. <laughs> uh, next question or questions come from Six I Fix. Uh, his first question is What is your opinion on the uh, Metafy as a way to improve as a player? Um, I'm not sure if you're aware of what Metafy is. I had to Google it when he asked the question. Uh, basically, you know how Bowdoin was doing the Duelist Academy stuff for a while? Oh, yeah. It's a website for that. Um, so you can pay um, a bunch of people like 50 bucks an hour to tutor you through certain decks or like less if you just want comments on like a specific replay that you send them about plays you could have done better and whatnot. Um, so I have no problems with Bowdoin's Duelist Academy stuff. I actually think it's like well, that's what this is now. for certain I players. What I don't want to see is stuff like that pop up with players that are like, I've topped. Well, that for my so, information. So this is the interesting thing. I was checking it out. It actually gives you the qualifications that they have. Okay. It's okay. not just anyone can jump on there right. and like yeah. you have to get fed into them. You pick who you want, yeah. and it gives you a rundown of like they've topped this, they've done this, they've done this, they've done this. Yeah. So you can actually work out. Okay, this is actually the player that I most want to pick. Okay. So it's it's not just a case of bozos putting their name up there hoping that someone clicks in and gives them 50 bucks for nothing because they don't know shit. Yeah. Um, my thoughts on this is like if you go to any sort of um, competitive or professional um, sort of thing, there's always going to be a coaching aspect. Mm. Um, so I like the idea of it. Personally, though, I feel like with this game, with the amount of variance you have, I don't know if it's going to be for everybody. Yeah, like, yeah, it's it's true that like sometimes your play style is just not gonna mesh with exact coach, mm -hmm. and it's like yeah, that coach will tell you how they found success and this is what they do. At the end of the day, stuff like that I find would be super useful for learning interactions and way certain things fundamentally work in the game that you wouldn't pick up from reading the instructions yeah. in a fucking starter deck. Like, I think these kinds of, like, academies are good for that. Learning the mechanics of being a good Yu-Gi-Oh player, not just a Yu-Gi-Oh player. And stuff like that will carry you through a locals. Like, if you're a new player, mm. learning in-depth chain links and setting his cost and timing and resolutions and what misses timing if you do X, 
learning stuff like that will turn tight losses into easy wins. But I think, like, in my opinion, and I'm a bit biased, I don't really love the idea of Dawes Academy anyway. I think a lot of, like, what turns you from an okay player to, like, a, a good to decent player, you can do that through watching enough replays. It's like, if you watch enough DD Grinder, stuff like that, and you watch enough free YouTube content, you'll get enough of an understanding of, like, interactions going into a format. I think it's, it really comes down to, are you willing to put the hours in yourself to become good enough? Do you disagree? So, my thought on that is that everyone learns differently. Sure. So, some people can sit there, just watch stuff on YouTube, absorb what they need to, just from watching interactions on YouTube, and that will get them to a point where they're improved. Same with, like, some people are just good at, like, they go to locals, they learn an interaction. Okay, well, this is how I play that from now on. Um, Some people do need that tutelage. Some people need Mm -hmm. it explained to them. Some people need assistance with it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not exactly sure exactly what they tutor on in the broader sense well sorry I know what they do in the broader sense but I don't know if it's maybe more the specifics about the uh, competition level of things as well because again in sports at least you do get like a lot of them have um, like mentality coaches people that keep their mind frame right and I know like we've experienced I'm sure like at our own levels we've experienced those times where like maybe we've been super frazzled at a point literally me tonight and Logan had the exact same thing of uh, if there's a situation where you're elfing back something that's not a rank that's not a totally awesome in your opponent's turn, both of us have just looked at Sprite Blue and been like, "This is the shiny expensive card. This is what I'm doing." <laughs> like, no hesitation. I'm summoning Blue despite the fact Jet is the correct target. And then immediately <laughs> resolved and gone. This is wrong. Yeah, but it's I've, shiny. I've like picked the card up, said the name, was like, "I know this is wrong." Sprite Blue. <laughs> <laughs> but you are right. Like, I think. But I just wonder, like, because what it sounds like to me is that people are looking at this and going, this, because they're good players, this is, must be like, this will work. And it's like, again, they it, can give you the tools to become a better player, but it's only if you put those tools to use. Yeah. It's, I, they're good for learning, yeah, like those tools, but you need to go away and develop and practice on your own mm. if you're going to, like, win a regional. Or top a YCS. They're not going to coach you to top a YCS. No. They will give you the tools to do it. You need to put that together and advance on your own. Yes. And again, topping a YCS really does come down to you. Like, it's not luck. You can go back to like five years ago when Ace Knight came out and was like... A little bit of luck. Sure, a little <coughs> bit. There's a, there's a 2% variance. I'd game. say like 5%. Sure. Like opening your side deck cards. Sure. But like, you go back to like four or five years ago when Ace Knight was really big and hit, I can't believe we two podcasts of Ace Knight in a row. Um, like he came out and was like it's all luck like luck is the only thing that matters in Yu-Gi-Oh it's not every player that has ever talked about it is like I grinded X hours testing a format I grinded X hours picking side deck cards I crammed the numbers on a format there is coaching won't get you the, uh, the ability to go ahead in figuring out how do I best defeat a format because that coach if he's giving you that information and he's playing that same event he's not giving you the next thing that he's thinking of because he's going to have to play that and be that format. Yeah. So you have to put your own effort in to be like, what card is going to break this format for me that I can win this YCS? Also, net decking side deck cards often will leave you a step behind the competition. Yeah. Yeah. Because people are automatically thinking, how do I beat the side deck card that was so good last tournament? To, so you can't just play it. To, uh, to close off this question, I do have one recommendation. Go on to Amazon.com and buy Road of the King by Patrick Hoban. <laughs> <laughs> it will give you everything you need to solve the Yu-Gi-Oh format, including if your opponent will let you cheat, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 let me step in for a second. Patrick Hoban wished me happy birthday one year, so... Oh, you get so hard about this. Anytime he comes up in conversation, you're like, he wished me happy birthday. Guy, he didn't even use your name! Guy, really he good. didn't use your name! Hey, I didn't use his name when I wished him happy birthday back, so... Oh, Guess that makes us both even. You are so sad. <laughs> anyway, um, you are so sad. <laughs> um, a question that didn't get asked here, but because we we're talking about it, I kind of want to ask it: is what I like some of the unwritten rules of Yu-Gi-Oh that like players eventually learn? The things that like are so inset to the way you play that like you don't think about them anymore. They're just things that you know to do. If your opponent will let you cheat. <laughs> 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 Classic Hoven. <laughs> um, Be aware of time. 
Yeah, pay attention to time. Like, don't time people. <laughs> but, like, look. <laughs> I did that by game mechanic, I did not cheat. <laughs> at, at the end Kronami of the day, no <laughs> yes, it is against the rules to intentionally use time to your advantage, but it will happen to you at a YCS. And there's no point losing a game if you know if you can stretch out an interaction 30 seconds longer, it will then put you into the time I'm gonna have to perspective. Out if Bendel get banned. No, I'm not... I, you, everyone knows I'm not the kind of person to do that. But at a major event, there will be players that, for example, will go back to Josh when he top 16 <laughs> Josh could have top aided yeah. if Josh was the kind of person to intentionally... Stretch out interactions, yeah. Yeah. knowing that you're not going to win in regulation, you'll win in time. Because he lost that game simply because his opponent stretched out certain interactions to create that two to three minutes that forced the game into time and he won. Yeah. <laughs> Can't. No, you're, you're totally like, right. Players that, <coughs> sorry, players that are like very successful will just kind of naturally work that into their game when they read a matchup. Mm. And it's something that, like, you're not going to be able to be like, can you hurry up? Because they're only minorly stretching a bunch of interactions knowing that it will create a game state later yeah. that's advantageous to them. Um, but yeah, something mistiming. Stuff misses timing. <laughs> yes, <laughs> now we the difference between if and when. Um, True. The ones that I was thinking of when I thought of this question 30 seconds ago was like um, attack lowest from highest in the battle phase. That's not really a thing anymore though. It's not a thing anymore, but it's just one of those inherent things that like sticks with you. Um, yeah. Playing around mech knights... But sometimes that, that attacking lowest to highest thing can sometimes really be a detriment nowadays. Oh, nowadays, yeah, it can completely screw you. Because like people who come back from old formats who play around that, because like, for example, that guy who was talking about like I come back from Edison format, like he'll be playing around Gauze. Gauze is not played anymore. But you'll you'll find if you attack with your lowest, and then suddenly you get like Gizmek on a declaration, that's just one less attack because you can't attack with that anymore. So people actually need to do the opposite of getting out of their Gauze mindset. Like as I like, we played long enough where I don't think you played when Gauze was really that big of a threat, right? Gauze, like, Gauze didn't exist when I stopped. Sorry, playing, yeah, you stopped and playing. Gauze was gone when I started playing again. Right. So me and Bragg would have been like the guys who were around when Gauze was was prevalent. Gizmek. No, Gauze. When Gauze was prominent, prominent, prominent. Wait, is Gizmek around? No. Yeah. Punk was, <laughs> yeah, Punk was, hold on. Punk was the main right, three. Is it? Punk was the playing three of in the main. Okay. Um, we just like Curse of Dragon. But like Gauze, like oh, Gizmek's back. You you gotta get out of that Gauze mentality. And I think that's the next thing, right? You gotta learn when a mentality is necessary and when it's time to transition out of those mentalities. I think some of them stick with you forever, though. Um, the other one, oh. and it's becoming more prevalent now because there's way, way, way more searches is if you have a search that you can activate in the draw phase, activate in the draw phase. Yeah. Yep. That is something that you will be okay. punished on when draw is in the format. If you can quick play search draw phase, fucking do it. Some, like if you see starter in your hand and it's like your only thing, draw face starter. Yep. Add summon blue, summon jet. Yep. Do that all on draw phase. Play around that draw. Um, also, don't uh, set cards before the battle phase. Yeah, never set cards in main phase one. True. There's not dual a... links. There is a main phase two. Yep. Set them then. <laughs> yeah. Well, then you don't really have a choice. But like, <laughs> the anomaly doesn't mean you don't do the. <laughs> Fuck you. Um, if you're versing someone new and you play imperm. Play it in the center column. True. Yep. Sure. <laughs> yeah, just set your imperm in the center column. They will ask you if they can move their card. <laughs> you will say no. You will say no. <laughs> you I, will teach them the hard way. I will say yes sometimes. I say yes to people who at local who, can, who want to take the card back. Or like people who like forget an interaction and then like the draw phase come up. So like someone today forgot like their GR, their GGL or whatever it's called. GGL. No, no, the monster. The level three add back from grave. Oh, uh, GG. GG. Someone forgot their GG. But like, that's and immediately true. was like, yeah, take it, like, go it do that. It was declared. Yeah, like, go do that, go of ahead. course. But like, imperm in the center column, and you play into it, that's you. <laughs> also, on that point, uh, don't play into your own imperm. <laughs> <laughs> I have done that on, on occasion. Actually, I did, I did that not that long ago. I was versing a sword soul player. I like negated their thing. Um, I think they had like, um, I don't know, I think it was like anti spell or something in the column. And I was like, haha, they get it. Uh, polymerization. He's like, uh, I was like, mm, fuck. Just well, I have to. <laughs> Never punished. I'm Never punished. Just activating everything in the left column. Just yeah, I play from the left column now. Yeah. I play from the left. I play wherever there isn't something. 
I play Yu-Gi-Oh on this side of the board now. Yeah. I don't go over here. But, oh, that's the other thing is too, and I, I did it even though it never became a thing of like summoning to certain zones on the board. Yeah. Um, like everyone was summoning to the rightmost zone on their board because of the Geo... Ah, Geo Transmitter. Yeah. Geo Transversa. <laughs> Literally has never come so, up. When I when Goki format was a thing, I used to play from this side of the board because mm. the combo was easier to go around this way. Yeah. <laughs> than to go around this way. So like I have to do that with Inistas. I have to play it to the right side of the board. There was a lot of times where like I know for example when I play against Lewis, mm. Lewis would intentionally play his plays in the that column yeah. just because he knew that I'd be like, This is awkward. I need to remember how to do how something. How to go else. through the combo, yeah. Because yeah. you can still do it. But it's weird. But it just feels weird to do. It's the same thing, like, as a combo player, like, for most of my time, like, you have to learn the exact interactions and the exact spots you put your card in link format. So you don't have the luxury oh, yeah. of being like, so I'm going to play... Before, though. I'm going to play just here. Because, like, Adventure Dragon, you're like, okay, I need to play here so I can, like, summon here this turn, make sure my Adventure Token's over here, make sure this is here so I can play with this card here, and yeah. then move them back over here. Like, as a combo player... It's just so stuffed. Learning your <laughs> card placement. Important. Yes, card placement. That's what they'll teach you. Okay. Important. Another, another one. Uh, keeping track of your opponent's cards in hand when yeah. you're doing your combo. So, like, if your opponent has hand traps or you're interacting with your opponent's hand, knowing how many cards they have and doing a resource count. Like, for example, when we played, I was like, well, tonight, I was like, Jake will have four cards. I can just end on four negates. That should carry me through. We'll see how it goes. And was correct. That was right. Like, is just focusing on that and then outdoing resources that way. And on that, like, realizing that you don't need to, just because you can, you don't need to overextend. Yes. Like, one of the, the funniest things of, like, the COVID years was, like, you saw Team Sam on, like, the extravaganza have game on board and just decide to summon a conductor without, <laughs> and get <laughs> gets Nibiru when he has no <laughs> need to. And it's like, oh, but I, but I can. It's like, you don't need to. Yeah, if you, you have had game, game board, there. play smarter, not like bigger. Yeah, like it is cool when it plays. And I, this is so like arrogant coming from me because I'm the kind of guy who loves. You to are Mr. Overextend. I love to overextend that local level, but when you get yeah, to those bigger events, card you haven't activated for three turns, destroy. Yeah, <laughs> but like at, at a high like local level, go nuts. Who cares? But like at regionals and my sisters, this is like the difference between bubbling and like top 32 you're losing that game so Bragg sent me something that's interesting do we have any more questions well we've got so many more questions cool. I was going to say we've just gone on a tangent there so next yeah, question but, but I've, I've been wasn't if I'm question, honest I've been wanting to ask that for a long wasn't time wasn't the question that we could have framed it as an episode you could have listed it down in the special yeah. episode stuff Jake snaked your time <laughs> Yeah, viewer, comment down below this is my after podcast. commenting that you were here. Saying... My, my podcast that I'm being held hostage on. I was here, came from Spotify, and Jay took my time. Yeah, but your questions. <laughs> Next question is also from 6 i 6 Which, in your experience, are the best sleeves to use when double sleeving to get best visibility for your actual cards? Um, um, I, I, use don't, I don't double sleeve. I want to, but I haven't been able to find sleeves that I like. Um, the magic standard clear ones you get good visibility but yep. I find that fit isn't quite right yep 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 um, I bought these ones on auction a little while ago that had like the cherry blossom borders yep thought they'd be a great idea fit like garbage okay mm. so I picked up so at the moment I've got my extra deck in my my first bite deck I've got in like the non-TCG sleeves uh, comment link description down below like yourplaymat.com uh, into code Nolan. We're not getting paid for this one. YP. I think that's my code. I haven't had to say that in a while. Um, so I've got those sleeves uh, with the the boarded kind of like pendulum-y looking ones. Uh, the, no, it's the Zexel ones. Oh, yeah. They're like yeah. the... I picked those up when we were in Melbourne. Finally found the shop after all these years that sold them. They're they're nice, they though. fit perfect. Um, and then my main deck I have inner sleeved. So I... Inner sleeving, you will run the risk of damaging things. I will put a common, just cheap, shitty card into the sleeve first, then take it out, then put whatever high rarity card I'm putting into the inner. Opens it up a bit. Yeah, yeah it just stretches it out a I little bit. It. Just so you're not damaging the backs of corners. Yeah. I just found, like, going the old, like, normal sleeve and an oversleeve, 
I found that easier. It's still protective. if you've got cards that you're worried about damaging, then yeah, the standard sleeve with an over sleeve is your better, the better bet. way to go. But for a good fit, you've got the perfect fit inners with a standard sleeve on the outer. Yeah. They look really nice. They feel really nice as well. Mm, but if at, you've got like thin ulties, that's where you have it. Play so yeah, at first, uh, you will notice there's a little bit of air gets trapped in them though. Um, just give them a bit of a squeeze, a couple test hands, it'll smooth out. It'll be fine. Uh, this guy. I wish to apologise <laughs> to any listeners guy. on the channel. Jake just thought it was instinct to slap the table. I was and here. Around a little bit. If I was only, here. If only we had someone who could edit that section out like it never happened. No, I no, was here. No. Came now from Spotify. It's Ben's fault. Ha ha! Suck it. I was here. Next question. Came from Spotify. Jake, took, Jake took the time. Then he Raga. broke Jake my ears. Broke my ears. <laughs> Raga? What's yeah. Raga asking? Raga asks, is there any rarity that you think looks better on one card type than another? That like maybe be. ultra rares look best on main deck monsters or ulties are best on spells, etc, etc. Starlights are best on spells. Yep. Um, Secret rares are best on spells, I think. Depends. Mm, for the mm-hmm. most part, I would agree with that. Yeah. Spells just look good. Spells do look good. There's a lot, there's a lot more freedom in the art. Ulties look best on ult on Xyz and Synchros? Mm, I, not Xyz. You don't reckon? No. Because Xyz is very dark and you get a darker ulti. It's, yeah. I think it like can, de- it can depend on the ulti though. If the ulti's, like if the monster's actually got like a lot of brightness in the artwork, True. that's where it'll look good. Um, that's why I think ulti Synchros do stand out as like a really nice one. Because it's, yeah. it's a white card and then you've got the artwork so it really stands out. Yeah. Um, and it's the same with spells as well because it's such a light background. The um, the ultiness looks good. Yeah. Um, it can depend on the ulti as well. Some of them just look trash. Well, you and me who did the um, video ranking all the different. We things. all did. Yeah, we all did we were all video. We were and all like, for that video. Can we, is this just answering that question? No, no, no. That video was crap. Um, <laughs> 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 that, let's be real. It was pandemic filler. True. <laughs> um, I think that's what you, you sent the message being like, we need to fill content. Yeah, it's pandemic filler. Um, Ghosts look best on synchros. Oh, they don't though. Ghosts look bad on everything. Gold rares look better on shit covered toilet paper. Yeah, <laughs> true. Man's big Which version? gold colored fucking toilet paper. Must be nice. His YouTube money's coming in. <laughs> oh, yes. when, he, yeah. when he starts plugging your playmat on other people's videos. <laughs> brilliant gold. Of course Return it does. <laughs> We're not um, sponsored by your play, mate. <laughs> you just said it twice. I said it once. You're the one giving free promo. Um, Shit. I had a one, but I forgot. Anyway. Ultra rares? Do they look good on anything? I don't like Ultra rares are fine on, like, main deck stuff. Who cares so about I, ultra and I like old ultra rares that taco, but, like, the art and everything looks nicer. Modern ultra rares? I don't know. Something about them just... Yeah. Maybe... I think it's the foil on the, like, the stars and the yeah. attribute... For some reason, that just unsettles me on modern ultras and supers. I'm just like, this is uncomfortable. I was looking at the LTE tellies I was using, the brags, and like, looking at those, I was like, man, ulti spells, man. ulti spells <laughs> can look super nice. Man. But then I think about like the one, the ultimate rare spell I got from like Generation Force back in the day, and I'm like, this card looks bloody atrocious. So I just feel like you can't really put it down to like. Which card type is the best? Because really, it does really depend on the art of the card and stuff like that. Yeah, the art really does make the foil in sprite blue. It's real nice. Secret. Sprite blue is so it's nice, and that's secret. mainly because it's got such a dark background. But then yeah. the blue of the monster it pops. Yeah, it looks so. Good. American Red Ghost Reapers look really nice as secret. I don't think they'll look that good as ulti. This dude <laughs> has made this mistake in real life, and I corrected him. Then he proceeded to make the same mistake on the podcast. And I'm going to correct him again. No, it's the American one. The other one. You no, own you... Americans. Yeah, that's what I said. They look really nice. You said they don't look nice. No, I said they look nice, I said. Did I just say they look nice? When we were Play de- the clip. We were deck testing the other day, and he was like, I need to get the Americans. They look so much nicer. And I'm like, those are Americans. Play the clip. <laughs> the clip of you talking in private a few days ago. Yeah, play it. Doesn't exist. <laughs> And if it doesn't exist, <laughs> but he records right everything. Now. He's on YouTube. Yeah. The ultimate rare. Who do you trust? Brain. Who do you trust? Oh, 
Never you. Trust the priest. Never you. Trust the snake rat. Trust the snake rat. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Next question, Jake. <laughs> that is it for us. That's it yeah. for the questions. That is it for the questions. Uh, but feel free to ask us some for next week. But uh, for the moment, that will conclude us for this evening. Thank you very much for listening and watching. Uh, as said, jump into our Discord. Jump in, say hi. Ask us questions for next week. Uh, catch us on YouTube if you're watching on Spotify, listening on Spotify or other. And uh, we'll see you soon. Peace. Goodbye. Later. I say hello.